In this video, we're diving into the maximum power transfer theorem, a super useful concept in circuit analysis that tells us how to get the most power from a source to a load. But before we jump in, there's one thing you really need to know first. Thevenin's theorem. So what does Thevenin's theorem say? In simple terms, any complicated circuit made of multiple sources and resistors can be replaced with a much simpler equivalent. A single voltage source in series with a single resistor, all connected to a load. If you're not familiar with Thevenin's theorem yet, I highly recommend watching our dedicated video on that topic. I'll put the link in the description. Now, using the Thevenin equivalent, we can simplify any complex circuit. In this model, VTH is the Thevenin voltage, the open circuit voltage across the load terminals. RTH is the Thevenin resistance. It represents the total resistance seen by the load, and RL is the load resistance, the one we're trying to power. One of the most important questions when designing any circuit is, how much power is actually delivered to the load? Let's take this Thevenin equivalent circuit as an example. We can calculate the current through the load using Ohm's law, IL equals V Thevenin divided by R Thevenin plus RL. Simple enough, right? Now to find the power consumed by the load, we use P equals I squared times R. Substituting our expression for IL into the power equation, we get an expression for the power. And here's where things get interesting. This equation shows us how the power delivered to the load changes as we adjust the load resistance, RL, while keeping VTH and RTH constant. What we get is a rational function, a curve that rises, peaks, and then falls. If we plot power versus load resistance, the graph has a clear maximum point. That's right. The power doesn't just keep increasing with resistance. It actually peaks at a specific value of RL. So the big question is, what value of RL gives us the maximum power? To find that, we take the derivative of the power function with respect to RL and set it equal to zero, because at the peak, the slope of the graph is flat. Solving this gives us a very elegant result. When slop is flat, the RL equals RTH. That's the key idea behind the maximum power transfer theorem. The circuit delivers maximum power to the load when the load resistance exactly matches the Thevenin resistance of the source. If RL is higher or lower than RTH, we're not getting the most out of the circuit. So when you're connecting a load and want it to draw as much power as possible, match it to the Thevenin resistance. That's the essence of the maximum power transfer theorem. Let's see what happens when the load resistance is equal to the Thevenin resistance. In this special case, we can calculate the current like this. Load current equals V Thevenin divided by R Thevenin plus R load. But since R load equals R Thevenin, this becomes VTH divided by two times RTH. Now let's calculate the maximum power delivered to the load using the formula. P equals I squared times R. Substitute the current into the power equation. We get power equals VTH squared divided by four times RTH. So that's the maximum power this circuit can deliver to the load. Now let's look at an example. This will make everything crystal clear. Suppose we're asked to find the load resistance that can draw the maximum power from a given circuit. As we've discussed, to get the most power, the load resistance must match the Thevenin equivalent resistance of the circuit supplying it. So our first job is to find the Thevenin equivalent of the original circuit. If you're not familiar with how to do that yet, don't worry. We've got a full video breaking it down step by step. Links in the description. But here's a quick summary of the process. Just four steps. Step one, disconnect the load. We need to isolate the circuit. Step two, find the Thevenin voltage using Ohm's and Kirchhoff's laws. This is the open circuit voltage across the load terminals. Step three, deactivate all sources, short voltage sources and open current sources. Step four, calculate the Thevenin resistance across the open terminals. That's your RTH. Keep these steps in mind. And now let's solve the problem. First, to find the Thevenin voltage, we start by disconnecting the load and identifying the two open terminals. Now, since that branch is open, there's no current flowing through the two ohm resistor, so we can safely ignore it for now. Let's apply Kirchhoff's laws to find VTH. We'll start by labeling the node currents. The two amp current source is pushing two amps into the node. Let's call the other two branch currents I1 and I2. 
Using Kirchhoff's current law at the node, the current going in equals the current going out. That gives us our first equation. Next, we look at the two loops in the circuit and apply Kirchhoff's voltage law to each one. That gives us two more equations. Now we've got three unknowns, VTH, I1, and I2, and three equations. Time to solve. First, we eliminate I1 using the first two equations. That gives us the value of I2. I2 equals four over three amps. Now substitute I2 into the third equation, and we find VTH is 22 volts. So the open circuit voltage across the terminals, our Thevenin voltage, is 22 volts. Now to find RTH, the Thevenin resistance, we need to deactivate all the power sources in the circuit. That means short circuit any voltage sources, just replace them with a wire. Open circuit any current sources, remove them so the branch is left open. Once that's done, we can calculate the resistance across the open terminals, and that will give us the Thevenin resistance. So in our circuit, we've replaced the voltage source with a short and the current source with an open. Now we're ready to simplify the remaining resistor network and find RTH. We can simplify the circuit step by step. First, we spot a pair of parallel resistors, which combine to form a four ohm resistor. Then there's a pair of series resistors, which add up to five ohms. Finally, those two simplified resistors, four ohms and five ohms, are in series, so we just add them together. That gives us the total Thevenin resistance. RTH is nine ohms. So now we've got the full Thevenin equivalent circuit, a 22 volt source in series with a nine ohm resistor. And with that, we're ready to apply the maximum power transfer theorem. According to the maximum power transfer theorem, the maximum power is delivered to the load when the load resistance equals the Thevenin resistance. In our case, the Thevenin resistance is nine ohms, so the load resistance RL must also be nine ohms. Now let's calculate the current using Ohm's law. Next, we calculate the power delivered to the load. So the maximum power this circuit can transfer to the load is 13.44 watts. And to get that full amount, the load resistance must be exactly nine ohms. Match the load to the source and you'll get the most out of your circuit. That's all for this video. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you find these videos helpful and want to support the channel, you can do so on Patreon. Every bit helps me keep making more content like this. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.